Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the Online Series 13 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we are trying out a really awesome team centered around Melmetal. This is the first and only VGC format that Melmetal has been legal in, and this team was created by a player called Kanto Clark, who actually has a YouTube channel as well, so please go check him out, linked in the description below, and the rental and a paste of the team are also down there if you want to try it out yourselves. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps in the description below, and thank you so much as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, I want to know what you generally think of the Gen 8 Mythicals, especially in comparison to some of the other previous generations. So yeah, let's talk about this team. So first of all, let's just talk about Gigantamax Melmetal a little bit. This Pokemon is not really used very much in Series 13 VGC for a couple of reasons. First of all, it is incredibly slow. Its base speed is 34, as you can see. Second of all, it's just Steel Typing, meaning that it's weak to common types like Ground and Fire. And third of all, it's fairly vulnerable to things like Intimidate, Will-O-Wisp, and Reflect. This team does a fairly good job mitigating a lot of the problems that it normally runs into. And so first of all, let's start with speed control, right? You've got two different speed control methods here, either Trick Room from Porygon 2 or Speed Swap from Calyrex Shadow Rider. Trick Room from Porygon is fairly standard, right? Uh, Porygon doesn't actually see that much play in this format, and part of the thing about Trick Room in this format is it's not that easy to set up. You're going up against so many Pokemon that are really powerful, and if you dedicate too much to setting up Trick Room, and your opponent just denies you, you often lose a lot of resources immediately, right? So you, when you're using Porygon 2, you have to be worried about things like Taunt, Encore, or opposing Pokemon just reversing Trick Room themselves, like from Whimsicott, for example. However, against the right team and against the right setup, you can just set up Trick Room with Porygon, right? If they don't have ways to knock out Porygon, they don't have ways to really inflict, like, Taunt onto it, for example, you can often be in a really good spot. Um, and so one lead I actually like going with is something like Porygon plus Melmetal, uh, especially because Melmetal has Protect here. A lot of players often expect Assault Vest on Melmetal, uh, and Life Orb is also not a very common item on it. And so the Life Orb plus Protect here is actually a fairly big deal because um, that's just not that common on Melmetal. A lot of players often run like Weakness Policy or Assault Vest instead of this, right? And so Porygon plus Melmetal is actually a lead combo where you can just protect and Trick Room or Max Guard plus Trick Room. The other way you can really enable Melmetal with this team is actually Calyrex Shadow Rider with Speed Swap here. And so the idea is with Speed Swap, you can just lead Calyrex Melmetal, and because of dynamic speeds, when you go for Speed Swap, Melmetal gets Calyrex's speed immediately, and essentially just moves right after Calyrex, right? So you can go for some really fun plays with that, because Calyrex essentially outspeeds everything in the format, other than Regieleki and Choice Scarf Pokemon, and Regieleki isn't that common, and also I'm not sure you really want to bring Regieleki against this team composition anyway, right? And so Speed Swap is really nice, because it allows Melmetal to just outspeed everything, and it really fixes the problem of it having a really slow base speed stat. So I think it's one of the best uses of speed swap that I've seen in series 13. So we've talked about Calyrex, Melmetal, and Porygon. One thing to know, by the way, with Melmetal is it's because it's Gigantamax, your G-Max move is interesting, where it essentially subjects your opponent to Torment, and so they can't go for moves, like, uh, consecutively, right? Uh, and so G-Max, um, you know, the G-Max attack is fairly strong, you can use that to your advantage. Do keep in mind, though, that you don't get max steel spike, right? So you can't get defense boost. Now, Metal's base defense is already really strong, so it's not necessarily that bad. Uh, but just keep that in mind, right? Because whenever I use steel Pokemon in general, I'm just so used to, like, being like, oh, I can just boost my defense via max steel spike. But there's a lot of cool things you can do with the torment, right, that you get from the uh, effect. So we've talked about Melmetal, we've talked about Calyrex, Porygon, uh, the Kyogre here is really standard, it's just max speed, uh, max special attack, and so this is really nice and clean in games with Water Spot and Origin Pulse. And you know, I focused on Calyrex giving Melmetal a speed boost, but don't forget, you can use Speed Swap on a Kyogre, Zarud, or Rayquaza. I guess even Porygon, but this one would be a little bit more surprising. Uh, and so like Kyogre and Calyrex is certainly a strong lead combination where you can just go for Astro Barrage plus something like Water Spout if they don't have something like a Tailwind user on their end, for example, and you just get a really powerful Water Spout to start the game. Final two Pokemon on this team are also really interesting. You've got the Rayquaza here. It's not actually Focus Sash, since Focus Sash is so important on the Calyrex to get the Speed Swap combo off. Instead, it's actually Power Herb, and so this is pretty interesting because you get Meteor Beams, you can give Rayquaza a special attack boost, and then even potentially Dynamax it in subsequent turns. Uh, Power Herb plus Meteor Beam is also just really nice into a lot of the Pokemon in the format that are weak to Rock-type attacks, and also your opponents just often aren't going to expect this, right? Uh, you also have Airlock, and so this is valuable in decreasing the damage output of opposing Kyogres and their Water-type type attacks, or for more sun-oriented teams, for example, shutting down things like Groudon Sun. The final Pokemon on the team here is Zarude. 
Zarud's also interesting. Like, I, you know, have played Series 13 for about a month and a half since the format started. Haven't really run into Zarud that frequently, and it is just, like, a fairly interesting Pokemon where its stats aren't amazing, but they're not bad either. And so Zarud here is mainly interesting to me because it has jungle healing, and so jungle healing allows you to heal your teammates, right, for a fourth of their max HP, and then it also cures their status. I think this is a really big deal because Will-O-Wisp onto Melmetal is something that you do often have to worry about, and of course Spore and, you know, uh, Paralysis in general is also just stuff that you'll run into. And so what this allows you to do is maybe lead something like Calyrex Melmetal, Speed Swap, let Metal, Melmetal maybe even get burnt by an opposing Calyrex, but then Zarud can come in and then potentially heal off that Will-O-Wisp with jungle healing. The rest of the moves just allow it to be offensive with Power Rip, Darkest Area, and Acrobatics. Acrobatics is a little bit interesting here. You don't see it very much in VGC anymore. You know, it, would, it was mainly used when like Flying Gem was around, but since you have Koba Berry here, a lot of players are often just going to max airstream into Zarude, and so, you know, commits the Koba Berry, and then you can acrobatics for more damage in subsequent turns. And Grass and Dark is just a fairly unique typing here, right? So you just get maximum damage output from Power Whip, which is really good into Kyogre, uh, and then Darkest Lariat, which is really valuable into things like Calyrex and Lunala. So, a lot of different ways you can play with this team, but I really like centering on Melmetal, so like Porygon Melmetal lead and go for Trick Room, Calyrex Melmetal, Speed Swap, Calyrex Kyogre, for example, uh, is another lead that I've gone with as well. So, a bunch of different ways that you can run it. But I've talked about the team long enough. Let's Let's get into the battles. We've got Sableye, Evil Tull, Kyogre, Landers, T, Dialga, and Zamazenta. Hmm. How do I want to approach this? Sableye is kind of annoying. Um, I'd really love to play towards Melmetal with speed swap stuff, but Sableye is obviously going to be the main problem for us. I think Melmetal is really cool here. Meteor Beam Rayquaza is interesting. I don't want to just bring all the restricteds and try them out. My question is what I can do. What can I do with Zarude here? Um, our offense isn't really that amazing, but I guess we do have Power Whip for Kyogre, and I, I'm not affected by Will-O-Wisp from Sableye. That's actually pretty compelling, no? I'm down to go for the Calyrex Melmetal combo, though, in the early game. Actually, Kyogre feels... You know what? I could see them leading with Dialga, though. So Calyrex Melmetal, Zarude, and Kyogre in this one is how I want to approach it, I think. Um, I'm not bringing Porygon 2 because I, like, could set up Trick Room, I guess, but it's a little bit passive. I don't think it's a bad bring here, but I just want to go with all the Restricteds. And then Rayquaza is kind of weird, like, I don't think shutting down their weather is really that crucial for us, and I also don't think we do that much damage with Rayquaza. And I think, like, Melmetal here, like, Dialga looks really good from their end, and so if we, like, get Speed Swap onto Melmetal, things become really interesting. I can also use Jungle Healing from Zarud, potentially, to cure Mel Melmetal if it gets burnt, right? So we'll see. Definitely a lot of interesting options already. That's gonna be Evil Tall and Zamazenta. Okay, that works for me. Um, Honestly, here, like, I'm down to just go for Speed Swap and then Max Quake into the Zamazenta slot. I guess my only question is whether or not Max Quake KOs. I could also go for Speed Swap and then Max Lightning into Evil Tall. That's certainly a possibility. Speed Swap. I'm just a little bit afraid about like activating a weakness policy. Mm. I mean, Evil Tall should Dynamax here. It is a fairly big threat, but we'll get special defense boosts. I guess it could be physical evil tall, but yeah, honestly, I'm down to go for speed swap max quake. I do expect Zamazenta to survive this thanks to the defense boost, but I think it's okay. I'm mainly curious if it's physical evil tall, because if you're pairing it with Zamazenta, I would expect coaching, right? Um, We've got Kyogre and Zarude in the back, neither of which are like... I mean, Kyogre's okay into evil tall. I just don't know like what kind of evil tall set it is here. Is it weakness policy, for example? Maybe I should have just been willing... Oh, they're not going to Dynamax, though. Okay, then maybe just going for the knockout on Evil Tall would have been good here, but I guess there's a world in which they go for, like, Protect plus Coaching on turn one. <laughs> and if we were able to somehow actually get the KO with Max Quake with Life Warp here, that would be amazing. Either way, though, this is my first time using Melmetal in Series 13, so I'm just happy it's on the field. Ah, they go for Wide Guard. Okay, I'm totally okay with that outcome. Although it means, yeah, we could have dunked on Evil Tall potentially with the Max Lightning, but I wonder if Evil Tall's going for Tailwind then? Either way, though, we get Melmetal boosted up in terms of speed, which is awesome. I get the Max Quake off there, and yeah, Zamazenta takes that like a champ. That's okay, though. 
Also, would you really Tailwind here when I could potentially Trick Room with Calyrex? That's interesting. No, they're attacking. Okay, they go for Foul Play. Cool, I'll take that. Um, Works for me. They're not going to expect Max Lightning here, probably. Get a, I could go into Kyogre or Zarude. Foul Play. I'm not going to go into Zarude here. Um, and then go for the Lightning onto Evil Tall. We'll see if they end up protecting Evil Tall, but if not, we can just get a one-hit KO onto it. That would be amazing. Because then they're stuck on the field with this Amazenta. Wide Guard, Coaching, Behemoth Bash, and maybe Snarl. And they don't go for um, a Protect or a Switch with Evil Tall. <laughs> nice. So we just get a KO there. I'm curious what they're saving their Dynamax for at this point, but now I've got Zerud plus a very fast Melmetal out on the field, which is awesome. And they just go for Snarl, beautiful. Yeah, neither of my Pokemon care about that. So Snarl, Wide Guard, Behemoth Bash, presumably. Uh, and I would guess Coaching, right? So it's like, you don't really hurt my team at all right now. And that's also why I wanted to switch out. It's like, if I bring out Kyogre, I don't want Kyogre to really take any chip damage right now, because I think it's pretty valuable if we stall out our opponent's Dynamax. Um, they're going to bring out Landorus T, though. Okay, so, I mean, this feels like the obvious Dynamax option from there in, right? Uh, it does get an Intimidate onto us. So what do I want to do? Like, my damage up here is fairly lacking, right? Maybe they go for Max Airstream onto the Zarude slot. Got the Koba Berry here. Um, honestly, I'm kind of down to just Power Whip Landorus here. What do I think their last one is going to be? Kyogre, maybe? Okay, I'm actually down to switch out into Calyrex here. And G-Max Meltdown the Landorus. I don't know, Zerud's just in a weird spot. Like, I wanted to conserve it, because if I have this out against Kyogre in the endgame, it's excellent, and a minus one Power Whip is just doing no damage anyway right now. So we'll see what they opt for. Yep, there's the Dynamax. How could I have beaten Landorus T in this matchup? Dynamax, Kyogre, maybe setting up Trick Room. Both of those are decently viable options. So the main downside for me right now is my opponent has the Dynamax advantage. I wonder if it was ever worth- like, the thing is that if I give up Zarude, it means that they're most likely like going for Max Airstream anyway. Oh, they actually Max Guard. Uh, then it's a little bit frustrating because I'm probably losing my uh, Calyrex here to a Snarl. Oh, they go for Coaching though, okay, that's huge. The reason why that's huge is because now, like, Calyrex is just back out on the field, I could just Willow as Blanderous. So my main question is, are you Lumberried? Because you already committed a turn of Dynamax here, so I can Will-O-Wisp onto the Landra slot. Um, I can just double Iron Bash here, I suppose. I don't want to really... Uh, I guess they might Wide Guard. I'll just double Iron Bash Landra some, for some chip damage here, I think. Just really hope we can hit Will-O-Wisp. Okay, they go for Wide Guard, beautiful. Yeah, that's also why I don't want to Earthquake. It would just KO myself. That would not be fun. Willow is connect, so let's see if you're Lumberry. I'm kind of surprised to see Lum here, but... Nice, they're not Lumberry, and... Okay, that was a crit. I was like, that did an illegal amount of damage. Yeah, that, that was a huge crit, obviously. Oh my gosh, though, Melmetal, go off. And they go for Airstream. Okay, works for me. So that's two turns of Dynamax down. Landers is at plus one attack. They have Max Guard, so they're not Assault Vest. I wouldn't be... Surprised to see a life orb here. Um I don't know what item are you for not A B or Lumberry? Is there a life orb? Yeah. Okay, there it is. So now they have the speed boost. Um We assume that my opponent's last one is probably that Kyogre. It could be Dialga as well, I suppose. So I'm down to just go into my Kyogre here. We've got Ice Beam, uh, which actually people often don't expect. There's a last turn of Dynamax on their end, on Landorus. Uh, we know there's Wide Guard and Snarl from Zamazenta. Landorus can obviously Max Quake either slot here. 
I'm just- I don't know if a burnt plus one max quake KOs Melmetal. That's my main question. Um, and one thing they can do, obviously, this turn is just go for Kochi onto Landers to bring it back to neutral. I think I want to go for Protect here into Double Iron Bash onto Landorus. I guess though if they just go for Kochi and then Quake onto Melmetal, that could be pretty bad. Yeah, so there's Kochi. But I feel like you really have to respect Kyogre here, but maybe they're like, well, you are you must be afraid of Wide Guard. So they go for Quake. Let's see who they're targeting though. Into Kyogre. Perfect. That's amazing for us now. Because, okay, you get a special defense boost, but your Dynamax is over now. Landorus post-Dynamax is so much weaker, right? Because, like, you're relying on Earthquake and Fly rather than Max Quake and Max Airstream. So Melmetal gets the double Iron Bash off here. Let's see if it KOs after burn damage. I think it's going to be really close. Oh, it just KOs outright. Even better. Excellent. Okay, so we've got Zarud in the endgame now. Um, they get a free switch in into their last Pokemon, Kyogre or Dialga here. But I'm so happy about Melmetal's performance, honestly. Um, especially because I was kind of expecting Dynamax e at the start of this game. Oh, it's actually Dialga as their last one. Okay. Uh, this could be a problem for me still, because I only have Spread-type attacks. Outside of Double Iron Bash and Thunder. So I, I essentially need to KO the um, Zamazenta right now, right? I'll go for the Origin Pulse here, because, like, maybe they go for coaching for a defense boost. Um, and I'll just Thunder Punch into the Zamazenta right now. They actually just go for Snarl, okay. And Melmetal dodges it, hits Kyogre, that's fine. Great. Because if we knock out Zamazenta, then I can go for Spread Type Attacks with full confidence, right? Okay, so here's Thunder Punch. <laughs> this Melmetal is so cracked. Gets the crit there. I mean, uh, Origin Pulse would have finished it off, but I would have needed to hit the Origin Pulse, which is always a little bit scary, right? Um, but yeah, the Kyogre is faster than Dialga here. So as long as we didn't miss there, the Zamazenta should have gone down anyway. Um, but Melmetal decided it wanted to really prove its worth here today, which was awesome. Go for Earth Power onto Melmetal, and yeah, you can see how bulky it is, especially after getting that special defense boost earlier as well. So Terrain disappears. Cool. Works for us. I know I'm faster than Dialga here um, with both Pokemon. Three turns of rain. I've got Ice Beam. Um. Yeah, honestly, here I'm down to switch into Zarude. Because I'm not going to take much damage from my own Earthquake. And, like, I don't even have to worry about activating a weakness policy at this point in the battle. So, yeah, they actually just end up forfeiting. Um, the first crit onto Landers was definitely a pretty big deal. And then the crit onto the Zamazenta just meant I didn't have to worry about missing Origin Pulse in that position. Because if we didn't crit Landers the first time around, it would have stuck around for another turn. But I actually don't think it would like, it wouldn't have been that bad for me anyway, since I was able to burn it. So, what I was worried about was my opponent Max Airstreaming that turn with Landers. Because I think they could have snowballed the game on their first turn of Dynamax if they had KO the Calyrex on the switch in. Because then I can't burn you, and then you just go for coaching Max Quake set across the board to win the game. So, uh, that turn was really critical. I think if they had actually just clicked Max Airstream into the Zarude slot, I most likely would have lost this one. But, yeah. We get the Melmetal speed swap combo off, and Melmetal put in so much work, so I'm already so happy here. Next game here, and it's Dialga, Zacian, Rillaboom, Kyogre, Gengar, and Xerneas. I think Melmetal looks absolutely amazing here. Um, especially if we get the speed swap off, which should be fairly doable. They can't even really fake out us. So I'm actually down to just go with Calyrex Melmetal here. And in the back... Yeah, I actually think Melmetal can absolutely demolish this, which is always nice. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go with Zarude and Kyogre again. I think Rayquaza is just fairly niche here, and it can be valuable into like some of the Sun teams, like against Groudon, for example, but I think in this matchup, once again, yeah, if I bring it, I can maybe shut down the damage output of their Kyogre a little bit more, but the Rayquaza also just doesn't do that much damage, and I don't really have that many safe opportunities to get Meteor Beam off, considering that their Restricteds are Zashi and Xerneas, you know, <laughs> like, uh, neither of those are good to go up against. It's gonna be Gengar and Rillaboom, okay. Uh, well, this is interesting. I mean, I can actually just Astro Barrage immediately. Speed Swap Max Quake on a Gengar works fairly well for us here as well. Gengar may consider switching out because it's worried about an Astro Barrage. I think Focus Sash on Gengar here is a fairly likely item. Trick Room is something to actually worry about, but it would seem very counterintuitive given the current board state. They don't have any switch-ins into Max Quake, though, so, like, 
My only fear here is Will-O-Wisp Gengar. Um, and this is my only opportunity to really get Speed Swap off, because I won't be able to pull it off in subsequent turns. And also, with Will-O-Wisp, like, we have Zarude in the back, so actually, yeah, for that reason, I'm down to just Dynamax, Max Quake, into Gengar, and then uh, Speed Swap. It's just tempting to Astral Barrage here, right? Because, like, it's so much damage onto both Pokemon. I think maybe Astral and then targeting the Rillaboom slot's also acceptable here. With the uh, Melmetal, but... <laughs> I just really want to keep going for this combo, so we're going to go for it. Uh, Kyogre in the back is going to obviously suffer against Rillaboom, so I'm going to need to knock the Rillaboom out first, but Zarude plus Melmetal should be able to take care of it. Okay, they're not going to bother going for Fake Out on Rillaboom, which is correct on their end. We'll see if there's a Focus Sash. I'd be shocked if they didn't have Sash here, because like nothing else on their team really screams that it wants a Focus Sash. Yep, there it is. That's okay. Um, but it does actually make a huge difference here, because if we get the KO there, like we snowball the game so quickly, whereas now we won't be able to do so nearly as easily. But that's still okay with me. Rillaboom, most interestingly enough, did not go for a Grassy Glide. Wow, they're actually Trick Rooming with Gengar! Huh. That is really interesting, given that they were up against a Melmetal. So I wonder if they expected Speed Swap. If so, kudos. That is not an easy play to go for. Well done. Uh, so now something like Grassy Glide onto the Calyrex slot makes sense. And then just target the Melmetal slot with Gengar, maybe like a Will-O-Wisp. I'm not really that scared of Gengar right now. I'm down to G-Max Melmetal into the Rillaboom slot, and then actually just protect with the Calyrex slot. Because the interesting thing is now my Calyrex is really slow. So I expect them to Grassy Glide, and then we get to get the G-Max move off, and then maybe I can just Astro Barrage the next turn, right? We'll see if they have Will-O-Wisp. I would expect Gengar to have Will-O-Wisp here, yeah. Very cool, very, very cool. Like, right now, they have two restrict- or I have two restricted. they have two regular Pokemon, and they are playing this really, really nicely, which is awesome to see. That's still so much damage, by the way, though. Holy cow. Okay. This is actually my first time seeing this interaction in terms of Torment. So, like, because I got it off at the end of the turn, I'm actually not sure if Rillaboom is able to attack here, just because this is so uncommon in VGC. But I guess we'll find out, because I'm just going to go for Astro Barrage here. And another Meltdown. What's interesting is I can also switch out Melmetal to take advantage of um, Trick Room, but that turn one play was rather bold from my opponent's end. And yet... <laughs> okay, we just get Astro Barrage off, so if let's see if Rillaboom's a Cell Vest here. Oh! <laughs> We just got a double KO with Calyrex, meaning I get two free special attack boosts. Now, the thing is, my opponent hasn't Dynamaxed at all, right? So, they'll be able to have a super nice late-game Dynamax. Uh, Melmetal's attack is actually just wasted here, but that's okay. This is such an interesting game. Um, even though my position looks really favorable, like, my opponent held their Dynamax for so long, and they have Trick Room up. So, even though we have a plus two Calyrex here, I don't expect it to pick up a KO onto either of my opponent's Pokemon that are coming in right now. Zacian plus what, Dialga? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Man, Earthquake is just so weak right now as well. Zarude can cure my... <laughs> what? I, I just realized it's regular Zacian and it's room service. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. What is happening? Okay. Um, well, I still expect you to protect here and then KO Calyrex. Got a special defense boost on you, but that doesn't really mean too much. Yeah, I'm actually down to switch out here. We'll switch out into um, Zarude. Actually, maybe Kyogre is better. Switch into Kyogre and just Astral Barrage here. I don't think even with room service, the Zacian's outspeeding Calyrex here, because we have Melmetal speed, but Speed Swap was so interesting in today's episode. Crazy teams here. But this is what I love, especially towards the end of this format. Okay, so Dialga should Dynamax here. Uh, obviously, Z Zacian, even in just a regular base form, cannot max. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think Zashin probably even survives plus two Astral Barrage if you're a room service variant, but even with that, it's okay. And I will, basically wanted to conserve the Zarud, because um, I want to go for jungle healing. Yeah, so they go for protect. Perfect. That's fine. Calyrex gets Astral Barrage here. I think you have to KO the um, Calyrex here right now with the Dialga slot. That is so much damage. Jeez. And they go for Steel Spike. Cool. Yep, onto the Calyrex slot. Makes sense. There was no point in staying in with Melmetal there. Essentially, I kind of pinned my opponent where this was always a super safe play. If the Zacian doesn't protect, we might just KO it thanks to the special attack boosts. And now I've reset the Melmetal speed. Life or Dialga. Okay, good to confirm that. So now we can bring out Melmetal. Now they do have a defense boost and I'm burnt. So I'm very curious how much double Iron Bash does into the Zacian slot. We're about to find out. I think here I'm willing to just go for Protect. Actually, I don't know. It's kind of tempting to Origin Pulse here. But like, I know I'm going to outspeed both my opponent's Pokemon with Kyogre after this turn. So yeah, I think Protecting is better and then just going for double Iron Bash onto Zacian. Since Grassy Terrain is up, like Earthquake's not really doing much here anyway. All right, how strong are you, Melmetal? Okay, there's double Iron Bash. All right. Could have been a little bit better there, um, but ultimately that was still 60%-ish or so, and that's with the defense boost and me being burned. So, still fairly strong at the end of the day, right? <laughs> and we get the flinch! <laughs> this Melmetal came to play today. Like I've had super, super favorable RNG, um, but it also meant I could have probably just attacked there instead. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, if I'd actually just attacked there with an Origin Pulse, I think this game most likely would have been over, because we would have KO'd the Zacian, and then Dialga would have taken damage. The problem here is, like, Zacian can just protect this next turn, right? And you can go for pretty free attack onto the Zarude. Um, yeah, this is going to be a really interesting finish. I think here, though, I can just Darkest Lariat, the Dialga Slot, and Water Spout. And the nice thing about having, like, you know, we don't we don't see Darkest Lariat too much from anything other than, like, Zacian, not Zacian, Incineroar, for example. Um, but yeah, here we can just ignore that defense boost, same type attack bonus. Yeah, you have a special defense boost, but you're not Assault Vested here. So, yeah, Zacian protects. Room Server Zacian is just so interesting. Like, we didn't get to see any of its other moves so far. Nice. Great damage there. And that was a crit. Oh my gosh, I've had so much good RNG today. That I actually thought it would have done that much without the crit, to be honest. Um... Water Spot should finish it off here, yeah. This one, like, I'm curious if the crit mattered, because they did have a, a special defense boost from Max Quake, so I'm not 100% confident Water Spot would have KO'd if we didn't get the crit with Darkest Lariat there. Um, I think Zacian flinching there didn't really make too much of a difference, because, like, the Melmetal went down anyway, and it presumably was just going to target the Kyogre slot, but maybe it had some surprise attack that I wasn't expecting here. So we can just Water Spell, and honestly, I've never seen Jungle Healing's animation, so I'm curious what it looks like. Oh, does it just not work? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know we're both at full HP. I was hoping that, like, it, it would still happen and we just wouldn't, yeah, like, get any actual HP from it. But, I, I mean, this was, uh, we've had so much, we've had three, like, really big critical hits in the span of just two games. Um, and so, you know, whenever you get good luck, it's always important to reflect on it ask yourself okay how much did it matter and i don't know in in this game it would have been close because like water spell from Dialga, uh, kyogre mystic water still does a ton of damage like yeah you have a special defense boost but i think dialga without the crit there would have probably been around like 25 percent hp or so maybe 30 and i think water spell KOing from that range is actually reasonable but um yeah i actually expected darkest area to do that much like without the critical hit um and so diago clearly was uh, fairly defensive there so yeah either way though we i i'm just happy to you know continue using melmetal and zarude um i i really wish we could have had both games like without the crits because i think like they we were i was already in a pretty decent position but the crits just ex essentially like sealed up the game uh immediately so yeah but sometimes you just get good fortune right and you should certainly take it run away with it but also reflect on your games and ask yourself how important it was because if it was super crucial to winning the game then uh it means you were in a position where you needed to crit right and then and you want to ask yourself, how do I put myself in a position where I can win without relying on, on good luck, right? But when you're ahead in games and you get um, good fortune, it can just accelerate it into a win immediately. Um, and yeah, that, that always is very nice. So we'll look for one final game here. 
Okay, we've got Evil Tail, Calyrex, Zacian, Regieleki, Groudon, and Whimsicott for this one. Five restricted, or sorry, four restricted. I see Regieleki and I'm like, you're a restricted Pokemon because you have an illegal base speed stat. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Speed Swap's gonna work very well for us here, because they have Tailwind. So I lean towards setting up Trick Room here, because we also have Eerie Impulse, um, and I can Foul Play into Groudon. So I think I'm gonna go Porygon plus Melmetal, Kyogre. Poor Rayquaza doesn't really get to see any play today, but I don't know, I don't, just don't think this really does anything into the matchups we had, right? Like, nothing where Meteor Beam gave, gives us, like, a lot of value other than maybe the Evil Talk here. My Calyrex is slightly interesting because they have Whimsicott and Calyrex and Regieleki. Only one of those can be Focus Sash. And if they're not Sash on Calyrex, like, my Calyrex can just one-shot it. But I think I'm down for a Porygon. Uh, what do I want to lead next to it? Uh, I could bring Calyrex. That seems kind of weird. I don't know, Whimsicott Evoltal, I think, is a decently likely lead from their end. Uh, I have to worry about Charm from Whimsicott, too, don't I? I'm down for Melmetal, Porygon, Kyogre, and Calyrex, I think. My problem here is they could go Whimsicott Evoltal and have Flex Groudon in the back and then not Tailwind on turn one. So then if I Trick Room, then Groudon can come out in subsequent turns and outspeed me under Trick Room. And then, like, the debate with Melmetal is, hey, do I actually want to Dynamax it with it or Gigantamax with it? Because I could just double Iron Bash into Whimsicott to KO it through Focus Sash. That's Zacian, though, and Calyrex. Okay, that's uh, not ideal. Oh, my Calyrex and Melmetal would have actually crushed it here, because I could have just gone for a speed swap immediately. This this is already super interesting, though, in my opinion, because essentially, like, I could obviously Dynamax Melmetal, go for Max Quake immediately onto the Zacian slot. Um, <laughs> we trace Intrepid Sword. <laughs> Uh, they could, like, they can't really deny me Trick Room here. Uh, I guess you could, like, Max Phantasm here into Melmetal and then Sacred Sword. I don't know if that even KOs, though. That's a pretty big question. I wonder if I ever, do I want to read into that? Because I actually think them Dynamaxing Calyrex here makes a ton of sense. Uh, this turn one is already actually so crucial. Like, I think if I can call correctly, I'll have a major advantage, but if I get it wrong, I'll be so far behind. This seems kind of crazy, but I actually want to go for Trick Room and then... Max Guard. Because I'm expecting them to try to go for the Phantasm play, but they could just be in prison Trick Room. But they are Dynamaxing, nice. Please make me look smart. <laughs> And the idea here is by max guarding, rather than just going for a protect, I prevent the defense drop, meaning that they can't go for, um, like, they don't get a defense drop on a Porygon and a Sacred Sword doesn't do as much damage. But perhaps Calyrex is just using max, like, Psychic onto the Porygon slot. That could be a possibility. But one of the reasons I'm going for this is because I think when people see Melmetal, they often associate it with Assault Vest. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that my opponent might be baited into thinking it's Assault Vest. I think a lot of players here might even go for Phantasm and Sacred Sword double up onto the Melmetal slot. So, so far, I'm already happy just because I, I really wanted to see Calyrex Dynamax. Um, that's what, exactly what I needed in order for this play to actually make sense. So this is already a good start for me, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> nice. Yep. And they actually went for Behemoth Blade. Okay. That makes sense. I wonder if that would have KO'd us even with the defense drop, honestly. It's very close. But we get Trick Room up. Very, very nice. Okay. I mean, I've got the Life Orb Max Quake just into Zacian right now. And I've got Eerie Impulse or Foul Play onto Calyrex. Um, I think I'm done to click Foul Play onto it here. Because, like, I'm already going to get a special defense boost via Max Quake anyway here. I guess my only fear is Zacian survives the Life Orb Max Quake from Melmetal. Ugh. I don't know my Melmetal calcs at all. Oh. That is so unfortunate. I thought about doubling up into either slot, but I really didn't want to double up into a Protect, and I figured we'd get the knockout there. That's a bummer. Okay. Because if we get the, the KO, I wouldn't say we win the game, but I'm in such a beautiful position, right? 
Because, like, then the Calyrex, like, presumably was targeting Melmetal here, so then, like, we KO Zacian, Porygon survives, I get foul play, then I can recover the next turn. Now they survive with both Pokemon and get a Phantasm off into Melmetal. Yeah, and even with the special defense boost, that still does so much damage. That feels like life orb damage to me. Oh, that was a crit, okay. I can't complain about crits here, though, given how many crits I've gotten today. But, ah, uh, yeah, okay, good to know that you can't, you know, guarantee the K onto Zacian there. It's a shame. That's okay. I don't mind this positioning still. It was just like, I felt like because of how well turn one went, I basically had such a major advantage, and the way I could have gotten around it was just clicking foul play onto Zacian. I probably should have had more conviction doing so, because Calyrex under Trick Room, when I get a special defense boost via Max Quake, is not scary. So even if Zacian protects there, I get enough chip damage where then the next turn I can KO you and Porygon can recover. So that's on me, right? Like, I could have hedged for it surviving, and I didn't do a great job of that. Um, I'm gonna just click Water Spout here, covers for Groudon switching in, they have no Water Spout switch-ins. I don't think we need to prioritize getting another special defense boost here as much. Um, I'm down to G-Max Meltdown into the Zacian slot, because it guarantees the KO even if they protect, and they could switch out here, and it would cover for its switching as well. What's coming in? Evil Tall, beautiful. Okay, does Calyrex Max Guard here? Because if not, it's just a double KO, presumably. Yep, max card. Beautiful. Um, my only problem now is let they have Groudon in the back, and then Groudon can just come in. And that's where, like, Porygon would have helped out a lot, because I could have been, like, uh, able to heal it up. Like, I would have been able to recover and then foul play into the Groudon slot. Like, and Groudon doesn't necessarily have the best matchup in a Porygon, because Porygon's just so bulky and can consistently heal up. And so, like, if Groudon comes in right now, my Kyogre's in kind of a weird spot. But the thing is, I've also conserved Focus Ash Calyrex decently well right now. The fact they're bringing out Zacian is really good news for me, in my opinion, because it just means they shouldn't have Groudon. And Calyrex just committed a Max Guard, so now I can just click Water Spout again. So, then what does that imply for their final Pokemon? You brought Calyrex, Zacian... ...as your lead duo... Whimsicott, Alecky, Groudon. Like, is it really one of Whimsicott or Alecky in the back? That's shocking, but, I mean, I'm very happy if that's the case. I'm happy to just commit Water Spout here, and then double Iron Bash. Let's think about this, though, because um, you could protect one Pokemon and switch the other into Groudon. So the question is who I want to double Iron Bash. I think Calyrex is the more obvious target because they just committed a Protect, so I'm, I'm happy going for that. Yep, Zacian protects, beautiful, that's fine. I still have a turn in Trick Room after this. Wow, this was literally the best Mel Metal feature I could have had um, throughout the three games today. And it was fun because we went with Speed Swap as our strategy for the first two games and then uh, played towards a Trick Room oriented strategy in this third one. And like, yeah, Mel Metal Porygon 2 is a surprisingly impressive lead because Mel Metal does apply a lot of offensive pressure immediately because it's so bulky um, and so strong. And so it's interesting, right? Because it's like you want to deny me Trick Room, but you also have to be worried about Mel Metal just going on the offense immediately. Um, hence my opponent kind of diverting pressure into that slot. Their last one was Groudon. Interesting. Okay, I definitely did not expect that given how this has played out so far because I feel like they had some plays to make with Groudon, but maybe it's speedy Groudon. Um... Yeah, since we're a max speed Kyogre here, I'm always going to outspeed... Or not always, but we should outspeed Groudon. I mean, I think their place to go for a double protect at this point with Zacian. Okay, I think we have... Yeah, the play here is actually to switch Kyogre out into Calyrex since we have Focus Sash and then just double Iron Bash into Zacian. This way, even if Zacian gets the double protect off, I can just Astral Barrage next turn. And then Kyogre Water Spell can finish this off. I think they need a triple protect here in order for me to lose. And for Groudon to be like max speed uh, or choice scarf but this game isn't one for me yet but okay they don't protect Zacian cool yeah this just wins us the game now Zacian faints presumably press this blades comes out oh actually this still wasn't over because they they could indeed be choice scarf crowd on right uh, they actually end up fire punching though instead of press this blading okay that's gonna win me the game then I think because now it's like okay I assume you're not choice scarf so character comes out just to be sure, though, um, given that you committed Fire Punch, if you're Scarfed, then the game's just over. And if you're not Scarfed, I think Speed Swap plus Water Spot here is fine. Eh, actually, Astro Barrage Water Spot is also fine in this position. Oops. Yeah. 
I, I think they should have switched in Groudon during the turns of Trick Room, honestly, because, like, at least you changed the weather, and, like, because I had fast Kyogre, their Groudon would have actually most likely outsped me under Trick Room, so, yeah, I, I, I think that, like, it was still been would have been challenging for my opponent, but if they brought Groudon out sooner, it would have given me a more difficult time, and the fact that he didn't come out meant that we could just, like, safely sweep with Melmetal under Trick Room, right, but I think that was maybe potentially the missing piece from my opponent but i'm really happy with this episode i mean we got so much like uh out of mail medals the rude got to come out and put in some work as well um we set up trick room in this one so Rayquaza didn't really get to come out but it's more niche on this team i would say and yeah uh we haven't really used mail metal at all and here's a team that you know gives it two potential ways to outspeed your opponent either with speed swap or under trick room so really happy about it here anyway thanks so much as always for watching once again check out the team and the creator down in the description below leave a like if you enjoy don't forget to answer the question of the day and i'll see you all next time all right, peace.